Hello, my name's Jade and today we will be discussing Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I got this book for Christmas and I started reading it Christmas Day and then before I knew it I was like 200 pages in. Illuminae is a sci-fi novel, it's like... It's complicated. <laughs> Our main guys, they live on this little planet called Carenza. Carenza gets attacked, so most of the people have to flee aboard three ships and they're running away from this bay tech thing. And all kinds of craziness pursues. There's lots of like political things going on. Some of that kind of flew over my head. It's really cool and it's so uniquely. It's a collection of documents and it's got all sorts of funders. We have transcripts, we have characters like often I am each other. They're a lot of fun. We have like personal personal journal entries. It made me nervous at first because of the way it was told. I thought I would have to spend a lot of my time trying to piece together what's actually going on. I didn't have any problems at all like trying to figure out what was actually- maybe at the very beginning when you're like you're not used to the names of things and you know we have our main gang and we center around them quite a lot in terms of like plot story I didn't have any trouble at all trying to figure out what was going on. I really 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 liked it. I would give Illuminae like a 9 out of 10 like I really liked this one. I lolled so many times I wasn't expecting it to be as funny as it was. It was hilarious and also in the beginning it's pretty confusing and you're trying to get to grips with things but I was attached as soon as we had the interviews and we're cutting back and forth between the two of them, loved that part. I got so invested in the characters. Anyway, I think that's all for the non-spoilery section. I highly recommend this one. I had a lot of fun with it. If you've yet to read Illuminae, please leave so I do not spoil you. You should read it for yourself so you can form your own feelings about it. Please leave if you've yet to read Illuminae and then come back and we can discuss. Okay, so the swearing in this is like censored. I love the fact that she's like, profanity remains censored as per your instruction. Sure, the story kicks off with the deaths of thousands of people, but God forbid there be cussing in it, right? It provided such an unexpected humor to it as well. Like, trying to guess what they're saying and figure it out. And like sometimes if there's like a bleep at a certain time and like the way it's delivered, it makes it so much more funnier than if they had sweared. I don't know if they did the censoring for younger readers or whatever. A lot of the time you could tell what they were saying. I really liked that aspect of it. It gave it like such personality. The surveillance camera guy. I loved him so much. He was so funny. Each of the different transcripts and forms of documentation if you will, they each had like such different strong personalities. We're constantly getting something new. It wasn't like you're reading from third person or like from first person or even if you're reading from like multiple points of view, third person or first person. It was so different to any of that because there were so many different personality types, so many different ways of documenting and each told things differently and it was just so interesting. You could like piece all the little pieces together because we got documents from people that weren't our main crew. It was just really cool. I really liked it. Okay, the interview at the very beginning, that timing. So his was like, and then I said it. Go to Caddy and her interview and Caddy's interview is like, what did he say? He said you picked a hell of a day to dummy cats. And then we go back to Ezra's interview and the interview is just like, you honestly said that? And it's like, yeah. Anyway, moving on. The timing and like the cutting back and forth was so much fun. Such a great way for us to like instantly like the characters. Look at the ship, it's so cool. I love Unipedia, like Wikipedia. Ezra was emailing Caddy and she just like wasn't replying. She didn't want anything to do with him. Oh, it felt so bad for him. I really liked Ezra. Who's your favorite character? Like mine's either Ezra or Caddy. Who's your favorite out of Ezra and Caddy? Cause I don't know if I can choose. They reminded me a lot actually of May and June. Did anyone else? get those feelings and then the email where he's just like face planting the keyboard <laughs> Poor Ezra. I have the interview with Ezra. It's like profile, conscript, suitability, assessment. And this guy keeps going on about his mother. And then he says, you know, typically trust issues in teenagers stem from children abuse by authority figures, teachers and parents mostly. The fact that you've undergone psych eval before lends weight to that theory. Now, you obviously loved your father, hence your inability to process his death, and your open hostility towards anyone who makes reference to it. The next logical line of inquiry is your mother. So, tell me about your mother. Okay, well, for the benefit of this slight impaired, I am now raising my own Oh dear, yes, it's my middle finger at Mr. Postgrad here. So we know like something's up with his mother and then later on that gets explored even more. Yeah, I do have problems and her name's Leanne. And then at the end, plot twist, this chick that she's messaging as like in charge of by by tech, I don't know how you pronounce it, is Leanne. You don't mind if I call you Leanne, right? I do actually. So look, Leanne, <laughs> I loved Caddy. Okay, the con- 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 how do you say it? Cornipicus? Cornipicus? That incident. 
Cray. Cray, Aiden, killing all those people. I loved how at the end, when Kylie's talking to him and she talks about miracles and stuff, you know, he didn't even give them a chance. We're not just me. We're not just me. We created you, bro. At first, I was so convinced that one of the humans ordered Aiden to do it. Like, it took me a while to clock on to the fact that it was Aiden's doing and he's slowly going insane. I didn't trust him after that. Both feel sorry for him and I want to like him, but at the same time, I don't trust him. I understand why he does the things he does. They all make sense. In the end, like, Caddy started trusting him and I started trusting him. It was really sweet. Like, he was falling in love with her. He starts talking about Ezra halfway through in the fight and he starts talking about Caddy. She's a catalyst. She is chaos. I can see why he loves her. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that whole alien situation. I sympathize for him. But at the same time, he creeps me out. So this Quinnipicus is incident is just crazy. All the people in Ezra's little spaceship thingamabobber, they wanted orders from like a real human being. They didn't trust Aiden. They let people in, of course, like most of us would have done in that situation. It's, it's tricky because you can understand the situation, the fact that these people have to stay in quarantine and that they shouldn't be allowed on the ship, but that doesn't make it okay to like kill a bunch of people at the same time. It's, it's a really tricky situation. I really liked the way that the whole disease thing was more of like a subplot than it was like the big thing. And the big thing was the whole Vitek, Carenza, Everyone's mad. Just like the mixture of like the different subplots and different characters. So interesting and refreshing. I loved James. I really wished he was like a bigger character because he was so fun. <laughs> As just accusing James of like sending him the email from Caddy. Chump, this wasn't me. I smell lights. <laughs> Chum, you are in picking curtains, meeting parents, making puppies. You must name your kid James in my honour. If it's a daughter, you must name it Jamette. I just really loved their conversation. Whenever the name popped up, I got super excited. I also really liked the one that starts on page 125. Okay, what are you wearing? Nothing. Your sister was just here. Oh, birds flew face first into that one, son. <laughs> You got pics of this Astro Princess? No sexies, I told you. Clothed, fool. It was so exciting when Caddy and Ezra like started talking together again. The rose he sent her was so cute. Ezra and Caddy's banter was also really fun to read. Even in the serious moments, they were so funny. This disease thing is cray. It reminds me a lot of the people from the Scorch Trials, you know, the flare people. Because they're like zombies, but they can still think. And at the end, when they were doing that, you know, pretty birdie, it reminded me a lot of that scene from Scorch Trials where they were like taunting, the, like, I feel like it was Brenda and Thomas, right? And this is like that only you're on a spaceship in the middle of nowhere and there's no one else around so somewhat spookier if it were a movie that scene would be terrifying they could make it really scary when james was locked in the thingy like he hugged the little girl and she attacked him and he was like really cool about it he was like don't worry baby uncle jimmy's got you and then she attacked him i think because his suit was contaminated i was so mad they're gonna get him out they have to get him out they're gonna be a team they're gonna be united it's gonna be awesome Katie's journals were Katie's oh Katie Katie's journals were also really fun to read because she puts on like such a hard outer shell. It's nice to see what she's actually feeling on the inside. And, like she kept talking about like the therapist <laughs> and like how she hated them and how stupid they all were. It was real fun. There was so much drama going on because we're seeing from so many different points of view and like so many different pieces of the story. So much was going on at any one time and like it was so tense like constantly there wasn't any lulls. The amount of times like I literally had to just put the book down and was just like crap. <laughs> Minimum 10 times I literally had to put the book down and just soak it all in for a second because my brain just couldn't handle what was happening. For instance the Terence versus Chow he was gonna force people to conscribe to him. I really didn't like him. He was just very annoying and he was very like forcing people to do stuff they didn't want to do and I liked the other, the commander of Hypatia. I, I didn't hate him hate him. Like I understood why he was doing what he was doing. I remember being at like the 200 page mark I was just like <laughs> I was like, how can the stakes get any higher going in the direction of the linking intercepting will be the big thing that will happen? Uh, <laughs> little did I know. But it felt like I had read so much more than what I actually had read. Oh, that Dorothy. I can't, I can't want to say Dorothy, but it wasn't. And she shot the commander of Hypatia. Another good example of all things must be tense and everything's going wrong at every corner. Ezra keeps asking Katie to say like hi to her mum for him. She helped him out a lot. Katie kept like ignoring it and like changing subjects. And like we knew there must have been something going on. I believe I was suspecting that she was on Kurnerp. 
is the one that I can't pronounce. Like, well, she's either dead or she's crazy. I was thinking there might be like some loophole behind it. Katie thought that as well, thought that there's a chance that she's still alive in the Alexander quarantine somewhere. No. <laughs> so Hypatia gets a new commander, Ball. <laughs> I loved her like small rebellion. Alexander, this is Hypatia. Acting Captain Sarah Ball speaking. We are not prepared to communicate at this time. Over. Hypatia, please elaborate. Over. Alexander, hear this. We are considering our positions. Any attempt to communicate, close the distance between our ships, or harm any of our personnel you have on board will be considered a hostile act. We will advise you of our intentions within the hour. Over. Captain, this is General Torrance. What the hell do you mean intentions? No response. She ain't backing down. I liked her a lot. When they were like coming up with like how they're gonna defeat the linking and the logic bomb, the climax was real. Everything got so exciting. It was so epic. It made such a cool movie moment as well. Like, I was seeing this all so vividly in my mind, despite like the document form of it, the plots and like the ups and the downs. It was done so well and like everything was handled so well and like all of the reveals like Katie revealing about her mother for instance and like Ezra's mother just done so well. I really love talking about like their first kiss and like how he should have done it quicker and he kept practicing in his mind. The whole time we're like well why did they break up? Like we got it like piece by piece. Like, she wanted something from him that he couldn't give her and then we found out that he she wanted him to move away with her and he couldn't and it turns out because his mom's after him. We had these like countdowns to the Lincoln interception and it started getting really intense. One hour, 59 minutes, 11 minutes, two minutes, no minutes. And then of course we had Aiden. Ugh, the heart was so cute. I like he said that to her just before he left. We go to Aiden, right? And I'm like, I don't care about you. Go away. And then he starts talking about Ezra Mason. I was just so worried that something bad was gonna happen because we have this page here at the very bottom we have this is mason i'm going in uh, no i loved how we had a picture of katie this page so difficult to read like i had to like turn the book around aiden's nurse was really weird because it was both cold and calculating and computerish but at the same time it was like really poetic am i not merciful he was very complex and it made me think about him a lot I still don't know where I stand. It's not technically him, right? It's like gender neutral. I feel like they referred to him as a him though. And like Aiden makes it feel like it's a him. And then Aiden opens the doors to Hangar Bay 4. And again, I put down the book and I'm just like, no, he's so paranoid that they're gonna shut him down again and they can't let that happen. Then he's gonna kill them all instead. That section was really creepy and like he started to play music for him. I actually cried when David died and he like took his last wishes because he, he wasn't trying to be horrible about it. But they started tearing up like as much as I disliked David, the whole situation was so upsetting. And again, made me mad, very mad at Aiden because you just killed a shitload of people and then he threatened Hypatia with missiles. <sighs> You're not doing your job, I understand. Like your job is to save everyone, but by killing everyone that's not saving, that, do that doesn't work. And then we slowly have like the death count going up and the Phobos virus percentage going up. So a small amount of survivors from Alexander make it over to Hypatia and Ball makes a decision to flush them out. That conversation they had right before was really cute and they were like starting to get along and like flirting a little bit. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. One of the guys was like shaking or something and they're like, it could have been PTSD. But she flushed them out anyway. And the next page is like all of their different like nicknames and stuff. Katie escaping on that pod was so awesome. Wow, Captain, you're grumpy today who the hell is this three guesses god damn it grant wow that was quick the security footage just came through you remembered me oh the conversations between ezra and katie were so adorable like from this point on and i love how they were like joking around to the very end he was looking down a grate because he was in an air vent and she was screaming at him to like don't look at her and then katie was like Wow, maybe you shouldn't look at her. <laughs> James, when we found out he died, and like listening to the transcript, and like he wanted the medals to be melted so they could be made to a ring for Astro Space Princess. I started crying. And then like right after that, we have Dorian too. And it's like, oh, could this, could this be any worse? And Dorian killed Stephanie. Very traumatizing. And then we see Zhang find him and he's like hacking away at Aiden. We're like, yeah, he's still going. I was thinking that it's weird that he's not been affected yet. Like what the hell kind of miracle is this? He starts talking about killing Katie. He stares at her for a long moment. Then this acts, don't look at me. Yeah, I thought he was gone. When she like started talking to him, I was like, Ugh! 
I don't think you want to do that. It's very upsetting when he died and like he killed himself because he knew he was going to kill Katie otherwise. Their friendship was really sweet. And we have the whole Ezra is dead reveal. Okay. First of all, I didn't believe him. I wasn't that upset because I didn't believe him. This whole time I was thinking that it's weird that Ezra's kind of like snooping around and that we've not seen him yet. No, I just, the whole thing felt off to me anyway. And then like the whole Dorian thing, the way he like wasn't reacting. I can understand that like he would have cared for Katie and he wanted to her to have the rifle but he would have like reacted in some way to dorian that's where aiden messed up like every now and then i'd flick the pages i'm so bad i always flick the pages and i'm forever spoiling myself for what will later happen i flicked it to like the point where i realized he wasn't dead so it wasn't as big of a shock for me as it was for most people i think i think the biggest like shock that i had was the whole aiden opening bay for, and I was just, what are you doing? Even Aiden was funny sometimes. He was learning from Katie how to be sarcastic. <laughs> and it would make me laugh. I didn't like that. Stop it, you weird freak of a computer thing. I liked the way she kept calling him uber brain and she kept like making fun of him. I liked that. And then we found out Winifred was there and like they had this mission to get everyone out and it was super intense. And then we just have like the whole build up to the end is the part where like those things are chasing her and calling her like pretty birdie. And the suit, and she has to hold her breath so she can go in the other suit. We have the Lincoln. I love the way it was like, brief suns light the night and the Lincoln burns. The first missile hits us and it's like so dramatic and intense. And Katie's being flung around. I also liked it when it was like, no, not mine, ours. Look at how pretty. I remember like getting to this part here where she escapes, going downstairs and feeling really sick because of how tense it was and like how like uptight I was. I felt physically sick. They have her little, her little spiel. So much respect for her. And I love like how human she was amongst all. Tears track down her cheeks and her eyes close. This doesn't look much like victory. End of file, data complete. I really liked their like, reuniting they're finally both together we've been waiting this whole book for it and i love the fact that the picture just says like together 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 and that very last part with leanne i didn't understand fully what was going on it's just a lot saying about how illuminate is going to come after them right how is what i'm wondering I'm like obviously they're going to expose them but i feel like i don't have enough knowledge of like the wider scheme of things one thing i was thinking as well this whole thing this whole attack was because of the illegal mining system but it's a bit dramatic is it not? I'm not 100% sure of the situation. I believe that is everything. I watched Passengers the other day and like it went so well with Illuminae. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you have an action filled, adventurous, amazingly awesome morning, afternoon, evening, slash night. My name's Jade. I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye. Hello, my name's Jade and today we will be. Blah, 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 blah. I am focused, right? Hello, my name's Jade, and today we will. <laughs> I. I f <laughs>